welcome to the Stories on Tape podcast. I'm your host, Josh Robinson, and today we're joined by a very special guest, Miss Fiona Battersby. Fiona, thanks so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So Fiona and I, we haven't known each other very long, but we have a very special mutual connection. My boyfriend, one of her very good friends, Travis Blackwell, he introduced us and kind of the rest is history. But Fiona, so first I want to get um, a little background for everyone. Tell us a little bit about you, where you are now, how you got there, where you grew up, all that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I am in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I've been here for about four years. I live here with my boyfriend and my cat, Toast. Um, we moved here from Memphis uh, for his job, and I grew up in Chattanooga, so kind of just slowly making the rounds of, uh, of Tennessee cities, I guess, but Nashville is home for now. Gotcha. Yes. East, West, Middle Tennessee. We've got the volunteers. Yes, we're covered. covering all of the, <laughs> all the bases. I love it. Um, so tell me, I know you went to school for theater, um, musical theater specifically, right? Yes, musical yeah. theater performance. So that was kind of, I guess your first, and I could be wrong, but maybe your first jump into kind of like storytelling, since that's what this podcast is all about. Tell me a little bit about that experience. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, you're right. That is certainly my first foray into storytelling. Um, but, yeah, I did musical theater. I started kind of late in life. Um, I was, like, 16 or so, which, like, at the time felt very... Now, as a, as a grown adult, that seems silly to say. But at the time, I felt like I was very behind. Um, a lot of people have been doing it since they were kids, but I just kind of, like, happened to... Um, fall in love with it. I went to high school for musical theater. I went to college for musical theater. And... Um, yeah, I guess kind of, even though it's musical theater specifically is obviously singing, dancing, and acting, um, the basis of it is still like telling other people's stories like they're yours. Um, so that's definitely, I guess, where I got my start doing that. Yeah. Um, and now you've kind of recently really jumped into photography, which, uh, first of all, go check out her website, her Facebook, her Instagram. She has some amazing photography. We'll get into a, a personal story in a bit about that. But tell us a little bit about that process, because I knew it, it, it took a while for you to kind of really get involved and get into that. So tell us a little bit about that that process. Sure. Um, it did. It did take a while. I had when I was like growing up, I always had a camera with me. I was always the person just like goofing off with my friends with the camera or like taking photos of things as they happen, even throughout college when I was there for theater. Um, but it was never something I really considered as like a job or as a possibility for a job. Um, I guess it wasn't until um, I, was, I was long out of college and somebody said to me something about my personal Instagram where I just posted photos like taken from my cell phone, not even from like a real camera or anything, but they were just like, your life always looks so beautiful. Like everything you post, like it just seems like you really like appreciate the small things and like if you make like your just day to day life look really lovely. And it kind of like occurred to me that not everybody does that or like sees things that way. Um, sorry, kicking things. Um, <laughs> and so I was just like, no, oh, I wonder if I could just, you know, what if I'm doing this with my cell phone camera, like what, what if I had like an actual camera camera? And so I bought um, an entry level professional camera, just kind of with the thought that maybe I could have a side hustle. Um, I was waiting tables at the time. Um, or at worst case scenario, I could take photos of like me and my boyfriend when we travel. We used to travel a lot pre-COVID. Um, so that was like the thought behind it. And I started photographing friends for free to learn and um, taught myself everything. And uh, yeah, I kind of just started turning into a side hustle pretty quickly that eventually became what is now a full-time job. Um, but it just sort of just kind of evolved. This one definitely was late in life. I did not start doing this professionally until 2019. So, um, so yeah, it kind of just, it was a slow process, but, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's only been three years, but I'm super, I love seeing your pictures. I'm super impressed Thank every you. time I see it. So I want to know first, I talked to a, a friend who's a videographer. So we kind of got that aspect, um, that viewpoint, but I want to know for you when you're taking pictures, is there something you always look for? Is there a, a perspective you always want to show or does it depend on like the client and what they want? What does that look like? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, there's not something that I'm always looking for. It does depend on um, on the client. Sometimes they have something in particular they are trying to accomplish or tell. Um, and if that's the case, then yeah, I take the lead from them and do my best to um, to accomplish that for them if they're 
doing looking for something specific. Um, but more often than not, they're not. You know, they um, I specialize in couples, so I do like engagements, proposals, weddings, and just general couples photos. Um, and more often than not, they just want lovely photos of themselves. Um, but I do try and keep it like on a case by case basis. I want to tell like the story that reflects them in particular and not necessarily another couple. I try not to like do the same like prompts or poses all the time. I want it to, um, you know, I want it to feel like them when they like get their final gallery and look at their images. I want it to reflect their personalities individually and also how they interact together. Um, I don't know. I had an experience where my boyfriend and I had photos taken once and the photographer who was very talented, she had us being very like wistful and romantic and the photos were beautiful, but it wasn't us at all. <laughs> like we're really goofy. And so like when we saw the photos, we were like, oh yeah, we look great, but it just didn't feel like authentic to us. And I don't want that experience for somebody else. So I try really hard to like, um, to just to get to know them a little bit beforehand um, and during the session and to in the end deliver a gallery that just is true to them. <laughs> yes. And I have had the great uh, pleasure of being on the other side of Fiona's camera with my boyfriend, Travis. Um, I've never felt so comfortable. I've never felt so like seen and appreciated. And the pictures, like you said, I like, I love looking at them. I look through them probably once a month, at least now. Um, oh. We've gotten a couple printed. So whenever we're not touring anymore, we'll hang them. So it's, it's, you are so good at what you do. And I love, love getting to see it. Um, so what do you think makes a good photo? Is it a background? Is Ooh. it the time of day? Is it the people in it? What do you think makes a good photo? Oh, you got all the good questions today. <laughs> That's a tough one. You just, huh. Hmm. It is, I don't think, no, it's not the background or the people in it. I, some of my favorite photos that I've taken are definitely not some of my best photos or like most technically correct photos. Um, for me personally, and like my specific line of work, I think what makes a really good photo is the emotion in it. Um, sometimes it's a matter of like a millisecond of a difference in time. This is why I overshoot and take a million photos. But um, I think that just getting like the, a, like a true moment of connection between people, this is often like an actual candid photo. A lot of what I do is sort of like gets kind of candid-esque style, but Often my very favorite photos or what I would consider like the best photo is like a true nobody knew I was taking it moment. Um, and that often means there's something ugly in the background or, you know, like sometimes the focus isn't 100 percent. It might be a tiny bit blurry or something, but I don't think all that matters. And I think especially from a client's perspective, it doesn't matter because if you get that emotion, it really like that's what brings them back to that moment. Um, and for me, in my line of photography, that's what makes a really good photo. That's not going to be true all the time. If you're a landscape photographer, that's not going to be true. You know, like what makes a good photo will be totally different, but I work with people. And uh, so for me, it's it's uh, just like having that true emotion be there, like getting the exact right moment at the exact right time from the right angle. Like that's for me, that's what makes like a really good photo. It makes me really excited when I get one of those. <laughs> and then what happens if... Um, kind of playing devil's advocate here what happens oh. if you miss the moment or what happens if uh it didn't go as planned are you able to kind of set it up again or is it kind of a well we'll just kind of move and do something else um that oh that's a nightmare um but it is kind of just you we just keep going um I actually had this conversation with another photographer recently. She shoots primarily film and I'm trying to get into a little bit more film. I want to do a bit of a hybrid on a wedding day. And I asked her if she's ever nervous that she's going to miss like the first kiss or a really specific moment with film because there's a lot more going on with film. You don't know if you missed it or not until you get the photos back. Um, and she said she was at first, but that you cannot go into it that way, thinking that you have to come to like a wedding or a session with just like, open mind and open hands and you get what you get and uh you can't like put that kind of pressure on yourself um so while I have never missed a first kiss at a wedding or anything like you know sometimes yes like sometimes a really cool moment will happen on the dance floor and my flash hasn't recycled yet flashes can only go so often and it'll I'll take the photo between two flashes and so it doesn't happen and you hate it in the moment, but that's just kind of part of it. There's at, on a, in a session or a wedding, there's a million moments happening all the time and you cannot get all of them. So yeah, I have to just, <laughs> the little control freak inside me has to calm down and know that there's going to be another one in 
the next minute and if I'm too busy beating myself up over missing that one, I'm gonna miss the next one. So sometimes it happens, but I do try not to recreate it because it's not the same. <laughs> and I don't want the people to look at the photo and be like, oh yeah, that's when the photographer had me pretend I was doing that thing that happened, you know, cause they'll remember that and I don't want them to. <laughs> yes, yes. So do you have a favorite kind of um, picture to take, story to tell, um, like you said, engagement or wedding, or is there something kind of more you don't get to do as often, but you look forward to when people ask about it? Not necessarily. Um, my favorite, my favorite. So I said already, I definitely specialize in like couples and engagements and weddings. So those definitely are like my favorite type of stories to tell. Um, but more specifically, I just really like, um, like let's take weddings in particular, I really like when a couple has made a wedding that really reflects them. Um, weddings, you know, like weddings all share like a common theme. There's a lot of stuff that happens the same at every, every wedding. Obviously they're all different, um, but I get really excited when a couple has put a lot of intention into planning an event that just really feels like them. Sometimes that means like getting rid of traditions that they don't feel like serve them or adding things that are special or particular to their family or their culture or their relationship, um, just because it makes it all around a more special day for the guests too. It's kind of hard to describe, um, but when you go to <laughs> 40 weddings a year, like it's just, there's a, just something very special about attending one that they have really put a lot of thought into making it like their own. Um, so I get really excited for those and I try and attract those kinds of clients, um, but it's just, yeah, that's that's my favorite kind of story to tell because it feels like it feels like they're telling it too and like they put effort into it and it's like feels like a little collaborative like team team effort but um but yeah, I mean I do other stuff too. Sometimes it is exciting to do like something different. I did graduation announcement photos yesterday and I was kind of like, "Oh yeah, whatever." Like and it was amazing and I was like, oh, "I should branch out more often and try new things." So, yes, I do get excited to do stuff that's outside of the norm too. That sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. Team and teamwork makes the dream work. So you, yes. know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta rely on each other. Um, so is, I gotta ask, is there like an unexpected something that's happened or you showed up somewhere and things weren't what you were expecting? Is, is there a, a story you've told that you were like, Oh, I don't know if this is actually going to happen. Has, has that ever happened before? Yeah. I mean, um, people like to, there's like the quote of like the perfect day or like the best day ever, like in the wedding industry. Um, more often than not, it will not be a perfect, it, it will never be a perfect day, but it also won't be probably your best day ever. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of, um, there's a lot of emotions on a wedding day that are not necessarily like positive emotions. And so, yeah, it happens a lot. And I try and, uh, I try and tell those too, like the before, before the actual ceremony, like there's a lot of like nerves and anticipation and that's part of the whole thing. And I try and capture that also, but every once in a while you get, I mean, you get some bonkers things. I've seen a groom break a bride's nose by accident. He was drunk and he smashed the cake, you know, like they did the yes. the cake cutting and, uh, and he smashed it in her face and it broke her nose oh, no. and it was terrible. Like blood went everywhere. She went off running to the bathroom. He didn't even seem like phased by it and kind of just went back and sat down. It was awful. The parents came up to me and they're like, please leave. We do not want the rest of this covered. <laughs> And so in that case, yes, I did stop telling that story, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, they're bonkers. Like weddings are living, breathing things and crazy stuff happens. And for the most part, I continue shooting and, and then I make a decision later on whether that is part of the story we're going to tell when I deliver it or not. But, uh, yeah. Wow. A broken nose on broken your nose. wedding day. Yep. Yikes. Okay. Well, that, Hey, it's memorable. It, it is. It is. They memorable. will never forget it. <laughs> So what do you have to say to maybe people that are getting into photography or getting into um, this kind of business? Are there things you've learned um, that you would want to pass on that maybe like, you know, three years ago, you'd be like, oh, if I had known that my life would have been a little easier or it would have made more sense. What have you learned? Yeah, honestly, it's very interesting that you say that because one of the biggest things I've learned is the storytelling aspect of it. I'm going to be honest, when I started three years ago, that was not something I even really considered. I wouldn't have considered myself a storyteller. I didn't really think about it in that way. I was just focused on um, making sure my settings were right, making sure the photos were exposed correctly, that kind of thing, because I was still learning. Um, but now that I'm this far into it and have learned from photographers who are more experienced than me, 
I do come at a wedding day or a session with that kind of mindset. Um, and that often means like taking a step back and not, it can be kind of frenzied, especially like I can get kind of like excited. I'm very like high energy. And so sometimes during a shoot or a wedding day, like I have to remind myself to just like, it's okay to just be standing there for a while and let things happen and to document that as they happen. Um, on a wedding day in particular, I think a lot of the storytelling comes after the wedding. Um, in the editing and in how I create the gallery, how I deliver that to the clients, like what order, what photos I choose to include. Um, and so what that means day of is I'm just like snapping away, you know, like I, there's moments that'll happen and I'll, I'll take the photo and in my head, I'm just like filing it away. Like, cause the actual storytelling kind of happens later with like how I choose to present that to them. Um, but that's not something I knew at the beginning. At the beginning, I was just really hoping that the photos looked okay. Um, but now that I have a bit more experience, I definitely um, try and uh, do a little less, be a little less hands-on, let things happen the way they are. And, uh, you know, like photograph that in a beautiful way, often an artistic or creative way, and then deliver that to the client in a way that lets them like relive the day through and through. And sometimes the photos that really bring them back are not even of them. It can be of like their family members. It can be of the sky. I, when I first started, I wouldn't have thought to do this. Now I deliver photos of like, yeah, the sky. I'll get to the venue early and take photos of like the outside, of the weather, of like maybe like a textured wall or like the wallpaper, like just like little things that they're like, oh yeah, like, oh, the, I remember like the way those flowers smelled. You have like a close up of the brocade and just like that kind of thing. Just like the little details and stuff just make help for the the overall picture of uh, of what their day was like. So that would be my advice, I guess, to just like, relax a little bit, take it all in and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that gave me goosebumps thinking about it because it, ah. is, it is those little things that you might not think about in the moment, but if you've get, taken a picture of it and I see it, you know, five years from now, I'm like, oh yeah, it was, it was a beautiful day or yeah, those flowers were a special part or I loved that wallpaper, you know? Yes, that is definitely, I've never thought about that before. That is definitely a, a great detail to add to the story. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why do you do what you do? Why do you photography <laughs> for, <laughs> for lack of a better term? Why do you take pictures? Why do you think it's so important? Um, this honestly is kind of a morbid answer, but I have always, since I've been very young, been very afraid of like forgetting things. Um, I don't have a wonderful memory. <laughs> I have a pretty average one. And I've always been really afraid of like, forgetting moments with friends or just forgetting what something looks like. If I'm traveling, I'm like, oh my gosh, I might never be back at the city again and I won't remember like how the light looked coming through. Um, and it is kind of depressing. It definitely comes from a place of anxiety for sure. Um, but I definitely found pretty early on, this is why I ever started taking photos for fun, that just taking a photo of it allowed me mentally to relax because I didn't have to worry about myself like faulty mind like trying to remember what it was like and at least having like the photo of it I felt like I could at least like put the memory into something tangible so that I could relax a little bit and enjoy the moment um and so that's kind of what I try and do for my uh for my guests I hope that me being there like allows them to just enjoy their day and not have to worry about actively remembering it because and I want them to I want them to be present and actively remembering remember it but it is a lot of stress and so I hope that me being there allows them to have those memories kind of locked away and it's like, you know, they don't have to worry so much about keeping it all themselves. They have like, they have the photos, they have their album. And uh, yeah, I started just because I was afraid that I would forget what my friends looked like when I was 14 or something stupid. <laughs> but Oh, I'm right there with the bad yeah. memories. So I love that. No, that's a beautiful answer that. So do you have pictures all of you, I've been to your house, but do you have kind of like pictures and photo books just kind of of things or is it more of a on your laptop? How do you how do you save them? Oh, um, it I, I do have a lot of like physical ones. Um, we just bought a house about a year ago and still haven't hung everything up. So as you can see by this blank wall behind me, there is plenty of room for more. Um, a lot of it is digital, but I do try and print as much as possible. Photos are not meant to be all digital. Like I think that um, print and this is something that I'm really trying to implement this year is to encourage my clients to print their photos to order albums because there's something about just like sitting down and like going through an album of your wedding photos or anything um but yeah I have I actually have this is at my mother's house in Chattanooga but I have a huge like Rubbermaid 
giant bin of photos from probably a 15 year span, like from baby photos of me up through like I'm in high school um, that I am intending to scan in case something ever happens to them, but also to like sort through and put into photo books because they are literally just loose photos filling. Like it is insane. It is very daunting, but that's kind of a, a goal for this year to tackle those um, and <laughs> do some kind of storage and organization. But, uh, um, but yes, yeah, so short answer, a lot of it is digital. Um, but I try and print as much as possible because there's just something magical about like holding and touching it and not just like scrolling on your phone. <laughs> yes, I agree. No, my parents have a huge wedding uh, uh, album that sits on a table in our living room. And I love to flip through it from time yeah. to time. Just one to see like, you know, what they look like 29 years ago. So, you know, I wasn't alive, so I've never seen them. But it's just like, oh, yeah, like people were people before, <laughs> you know, we ever came to be a part of their lives. Um, and then my mom also scrapbooking was a big thing. So there's yes. a whole closet in our office that is just full. I think my scrapbook is mostly done. And then my three sisters, unfortunately, theirs is not done. So there are just lots of pictures of them in that, in that closet. My mom's like, one day I will get to this. I promise. And so I pick all my sisters. I'm like, mine's done. I, you know, my story is good. You guys, I don't know. And they're like, get over it. So, but it's so, yes. It's a yes, big task. It, it is. And there, like you said, but I think my mom has like smaller Rubbermaid ones that are like handheld and they're just like years and years and years. So I get that. I wish you good luck on that endeavor. <laughs> it's important. It's overwhelming, but it's important. I, somebody once said nobody in 50 years is going to know what a flash drive was. I'm like, you know what? That is such a good point. Like you got to print your photos. You've got to get them off of, uh, off of the, the, the ether and the, <laughs> And into off your the hands. cloud. Yes. yes, off the cloud, <laughs> onto a, a book for sure. Yes, and I think my my main question that I want to ask everyone that I talk to is, why do you think storytelling is so important? Oh, that's a tough one. I think I think it's important because it is honestly all that you have to like, not pass down to people, but it is. I think that storytelling in is essentially preserving your memories, sharing your, yourself with other people, sharing your memories with other people. Um, I think that it's a way to learn about people in your life that, uh, you know, maybe, you know, like when you're like a little kid and your parents tell you like stories of like their marriage or like how, li how life was before you, or maybe your grandparents that you may or may not have like gotten to know and that's all you have. And uh, it's just kind of like, I hate to use the word like legacy, um, but I do think that it's nice to just have something to to remember and for the people after you to remember whether that's your kids or just your friends um or just oh gosh we're I feel like I'm like skirting the issue of death here but and I don't even necessarily mean that I do think it's nice to have something to like pass on when you pass but like aside from that I think it's just for your own self too like I think stories from like your childhood like um I think it's nice to tell that for future you like it's just like I don't know I keep coming back to like saving your memories, sharing those with others. Uh, I'm not articulating it well, but <laughs> no, that important. makes no, no, Yes, definitely. No, that makes perfect sense. I mean, it goes back to like albums, you know, you know, 15 years from now when you have kids or you have grandkids or whatever, and you can show them like, hey, this was, this happened. And you know, it, it, it helps you rem remember the things you've been through, the things that you want to remember, maybe the things you don't want to remember, but they're there. Um, yep. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, that's important too, honestly. <laughs> That's a good point. Yes. And so I think, especially with photos and and the videographer I spoke to was Sarah Pierce, who I think you've met. Yes, my, yes, yes. yes. Um, and so it was, it's just really neat to be able to have that piece of time and be able to look back on it from, you know, a day ago, 10 years ago and be like, oh yeah, there was that. And then it, I think it also helps the person you're telling the story to. They yes. can also have an image and kind of at least see what you remember. Yes, 100%. I think for the person you're telling the story to, it's it's almost as important, if not more important um, for them. I think that like impacting the, the listener in a way, like that's like super important. I think that's something that makes like a really good story is just like if it has some kind of impact on the person you're telling it to, the person who's listening. And that doesn't necessarily mean like they feel inspired to go do something. But like if even if they just feel like they know you better or just have a better sense of you, who you are as a person or your relationship with somebody like then I think you did you did the job well. <laughs> Amen. I agree 100%. Well, Fiona, if people want to follow your story, where should they go? Who should they look for? 
Um, they can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm Fiona Battersby Photo on both or my website, Fiona Battersby Photo. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty active on all of those. Unfortunately, it's part of the job, so I'm a social media hound. But, um, but yeah, they can follow me there. Perfect. And we'll put links to it in the description. Um, oh. Fiona is F-I-O-N-A in case yes. there's another way to spell Fiona. Um, but in case there is, you know. Um, <laughs> but Fiona, thank you so much. This has been You're fantastic. Welcome. I love you so much, friend. Oh my gosh, um, I love you too. This is so fun. Yes. And I can't wait to see more pictures and to share some of your pictures with the listeners. Oh, fun. Yes, that would make me happy. Great. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Stories on Tape podcast. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Stories on Tape Pod and Twitter at Stories on Tape. Now, if you have a storyteller you think should be on a future episode or a story you want to share, email me at Stories on Tape Podcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep following our guests and their stories too. Links to their social medias are in the description of the episode. Can't wait to share more stories with you.